still have them. And then hold on to homework three. Yeah, everything goes right in the same stack. Well, yeah, everything goes in the same stack. That's always how it is. If you have something to turn in, it always just goes right up here. Okay.
So be careful from now on when I ask you, when you come and ask me something, and I say, have you read the directions? Or I'll say, you know, let's look at the directions together. You, that takes on a kind of a new meaning. You really do need to read the directions, okay? That's it, not just in this class, in all of college. It's really important. Okay, so then more directions are up here on the board. Turn in homework one and two if you still have them, and hold on to homework three. Okay, how many people are wondering what homework three is? All right, you didn't read the directions. Remember we talked about, this is why I'm saying this is serious. Uh, this is not just this class. This is. This one, like I say, one of the things I'm supposed to do in this class is prepare you for other college classes. Prepare you for your reading chores in other college classes. And one of the things you will find about most college teachers is that they don't remind you of stuff, okay? You were given the syllabus at the beginning. And I told you that you needed to look at the syllabus before and after class every day, right? Remember that? Those were the directions. So if you had looked at the syllabus, you would have seen that last Wednesday you had homework that is due today. And I do not accept late work. So if you didn't do homework free, and have it to turn into it. I won't accept it. Okay? Does that make sense? That goes back to reading the directions. Read this every day. Okay? Homework is due at the class meeting after it's assigned. Alright? So we're going to work on homework three a little bit today. Um, and people who have it will turn it in. Okay? Now, tonight, you guys will look at the syllabus, right? Okay. And this is where your homework is every night. You need to be looking at this. If you didn't know we had homework, it's because you just didn't do what the directions say. Okay. Um, so, yes, Sandra. So, um, so, I already knew about the homework. And I read, I read homework number three, and I think you had the wrong page number for exercise number three. I wanted to let you know. Okay, we'll look, we'll look at it when, when we get to it. Okay, it was basically this chunk of chapter two was what you needed to do. The first chunk of chapter two. Okay, we'll we'll look at, we'll look at yours when you get it. Okay, before that, however, I need to say something about. This, which some of you haven't seen before, but some people got attached to homework two, not homework one. Re remember, I said that um, I the little bear. Remember the little bear, and I said that I usually don't do that. What did I do? I know some people came in late. Um, however, it's not that I don't ever let you redo work. Okay. What I always say is, if you get, if people fail my classes, it's not because you get bad grades on them. It's because you don't turn stuff in. Okay, you either don't turn it in to begin with, or you don't turn it in after I've given you a chance to work on it some more. Okay, but the way I do that from here on in is not by just letting you, you know, wholesale do it over and turn it in. I put what's called a pink sheet on it. It doesn't look pink up here, but it, it is pink, okay? Um, the thing about this is you need to read the directions. All right, it says to the student, read and follow these directions, okay? So, um, I a couple coming back people came late. It says you need some extra help with this before it's graded. <coughs> Please bring this form and the attached assignment to your instructor's office anytime during office hours. Again, if you come and ask me when are your office hours, where is your office, I'm going to say look on your green sheet. You have
have that information there. Okay. Um, however, as we talked about, so come to my office and I will help you with it. As we talked about, some people can't make it to my office during office hours. I only have five office hours a week, which is not very much, especially compared to the hours that are available to you in either the English Center or the Reading Center. So the second thing says, or take this form and attach assignment to the ESSC or the RC. Okay. Now, I use this form for both my writing and reading classes. So, and I usually don't distinguish because, as you guys know, the Reading Center has many fewer staff members than the ESSC. Does everyone know what this stands for? What does that mean? This is, this is what we, you would either call it, it's kind of a, a, a crazy name because it, the name of the place where we were in the classroom last week when we went down to, the, to get the assessment, that classroom is over in the ESSC, which stands for English and Study Skills Center. But usually when people refer to it, they just say English Center. Okay. So you'll hear that referred to as either the ESSC or the English Center. Okay. So that's on that side. Then we came back over here, right? Did we do that in this class? Did we come back to this side? We, we stayed in the room. Mm -hmm. this one. I've, I've done three classes. I forget which did what. Um, one of the classes came back over, the other stayed in the room. This side is the Reading Center. That's the RC. The other side is the English Center. Two different staffs, many more people in the English Center. They can help you with homework in this class too. So if there aren't people available in the Reading Center, go to somebody in the English Center. Come to my office is the first suggestion. Okay. Um, with this assignment, we didn't use the textbook, the one I'm putting it on now, Homework 2. Um, but any other notes you, take, you took or anything that has to do with whatever lesson it is, then you have to make the correction. So just going down there and meeting with somebody isn't enough. You have to show me that you can now do it. Sometimes they will look at it with you, give you some suggestions, and ask you to come back and show it to them again. Okay. So this isn't something that can be done at, you know, 11.30 on the day it's due, all right? You have to, again, take stuff down there, leave this class, go down there, come to my office, go down there, do your journal, do your lab work, do any pink sheets, do your homework, get it done before you leave campus, okay? And you can get, you can sign in and get hours for working on these, okay? You must have, oops, somebody sign it. I won't accept it if it isn't initialed by somebody in the Reading Center or the ESSC. And then you have a due date down here. What I do is I give the date I gave it to you up here and then one week. <coughs> one more week to get it done and bring it back. Okay, does that make sense? This way I make sure that I'm not just giving you stuff back and saying, you know, minus 20. I'm giving it back and saying, looks like you didn't understand this. Please have somebody help you. Okay? But this is a more formal thing. The, like I said, the little bear, that's only a one-time thing. This, this is what you'll see from now on if it looks like you need more help with something. Okay? Anybody have questions about this? Several people got these across all my classes. And they always do. I kind of work it so that I, it's not that I give them out just to give them out, but um, I kind of work it so that I'm introducing these. Okay? All right. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to doing both of these classes. I don't know why it's so hard for me to do the same class, one right after the other. Okay. Um, the journal topic for this week. <coughs> remember, just so we are now on track, remember I gave you that one topic during this week because we virtually didn't have class last week. So I gave you a bunch of handouts the first week, and this is what the website will look like. Um, a bunch of handouts here. The journal topic um, was journal number one. Now we're up to journal number two, and there I think I do have 
at least one handout this week. I'm not sure. Um, Maybe, maybe not. We may not see handouts up here till here, but there will be handouts posted under the journal topic for the regular weeks. Okay. So this journal topic says, "What challenges have you faced in this class or at MPC? What can you do to overcome these challenges?" Okay. So maybe your challenge is that you didn't know there was homework in this class for today, right? So what can you do to overcome these challenges? You can read the directions, all right? So it all ties together. Yes, that's the lesson for today, okay? And again, this, this isn't, you guys are not doing anything that every other class doesn't do. This is the usual thing. But I kind of do it on purpose to try to catch you and give you a heads up. Yeah, you guys are responsible for yourselves and you need to read the directions and you need to follow them, okay, in all your classes. Because a lot of them are even less um, detailed than mine, okay? The teachers aren't going to give you even, you know, even this much information. You guys have got to be aware of what's going on. Okay, um, let's see. Does anyone have any questions about the reading center? About what happened down there? About what class, what what lab you're in? Oh, well, I guess at 1.30 I have an orientation. For okay, um, actually, again, if you looked at the syllabus, and remember this is the... Um, this is the reading the directions for today. Reading cafe students go to orientation at 11.50. Oh! Okay. So you guys go down there at, well, halfway through this class. 11.50. It says 150. 150? Okay. Where it says 150? Oh! Uh, it's like 11.50. This is what I'm saying. I'm having more trouble. Going from the same class to the same class. The green class is your oh, is the other class. This is your class. There are the purple. If you see me picking up the green folder, that's wrong. That's the 11 class. I have, that's what I have this table for. I put it over here, but I'm having trouble doing that. Okay, now we're looking at the right syllabus. Reading cafe students go to orientation at one. Okay, so about 2 o'clock, 1.50, 2 o'clock, I will send reading cafe people down there, okay? Does everyone know for sure what lab they're in? Okay, if you don't, if you have a question, I have a report that shows this and what it looks like without showing your names here. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine people in, it looks like we have nine people in Reading Cafe. The rest are in Reading Strategies. So the rest of the people will stay here, and the nine Reading Cafe people will go down there. Okay, there's one person where it says needs assessment, but I think, or maybe not. I think that person was assessed. If that person wasn't, if, if you were not assessed, go down with the meeting cafe people and then we'll assess you at that time. Okay? Does that make sense? What's the difference between uh, reading strategies and meeting cafe? Okay, the reading strategies, as Paul and Norton explained to you, it isn't that some of the people are at a higher level and some of them are at a different level. Um, I'm glad you asked that because I kind of like to, th this picture that Paula Norton drew up at the, up on the board, remember when she drew the three circles? And she kind of drew them like this. Um, yeah, the way I would explain that, if I were doing it, although I actually know <coughs> nothing about it compared to Paula Norton, is that if these are the three parts of your brain that need to work together to read and write successfully, Somebody in reading strategies, theoretically, your circles look more like this. Okay, that, so that's what Paula doesn't show up there. 
where one of the one of these strengths, and these are three strengths, like like the person who miss. Remember, we talked about in that beginning thing, the person who misread this. Remember this word from the from the why we buy. And a lot of people wrote down that this meant throw away. Remember that? Actually, this means throw away. So the person who misread this word as this word has a really strong visual memory of seeing a word that starts with these four letters. So your brain is filling the rest of this in as this without allowing you to sound that out. So your phonetic base is being pushed aside. Okay, and then the context, you're not, it's not allowing you to read that word in context where throwaway doesn't make any sense. You see what I'm saying? So this person, whether this is the bigger part or this is the bigger part, this is the bigger part, this person will be in reading strategies. Does that make sense? This person will be in reading cafe. If your brain looks like this, more or less, you'll be that person will be in reading cafe. If all of your strengths are even, and you don't need what 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 reading strategies will do is try to make these two bigger so that it looks more like this. That's the difference between the maps. Does that make sense to people? Don't ask me that. All I know about this, I don't know exactly what they do down there. What I do know is that the people that I have in my 322 who are in reading strategies and then are in my 302 next semester, their work improves like 500%. Whatever it is they do down there works. Okay, that's what I know about it. Okay? So, if you, like I said, if you don't know what lab you're in, I have it up here. Also, is there anyone in reading strategies, which means the, that one, um, who has not heard from the, the lab about your schedule? Okay, you guys should probably give them a call or go down and visit and see, make sure that they're up to date. Because I think the labs start this week. I think you have to start it this week. So if, I mean, it's okay because they're they're the ones that have to schedule, but kind of push them a little bit because sometimes it tends to to lag. Okay, um, so that's good. All right, I always I'm so dependent on my little lesson plan here. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna do now is look at this homework that not everybody did. I have a couple of my up here. You find that this just goes on all semester. I'm always complaining of losing stuff. It never goes any better. Okay, so here's the thing about homework in this class. If you did not do homework three today, and what this little picture here is, let's erase all this other stuff. This is a picture of the, home, the next, this homework and the next two. So we're working through chapter two, the beginning, the introduction part of chapter two. And what that chapter introduces, we, it, I introduced this in class a little bit the day we went over the why we buy piece. And we looked a little bit, very briefly, I know a lot of you don't remember that, but we looked at the different vocabulary words and how you could have gotten the answers from using what was in the paragraph, okay? So we're going to really kind of zero in on those specific types of clues. Homework three is the first part, so it's the restatement clues and the contrast clues, that's today. Tonight you have more homework and then Thursday night you have more homework in the same stuff, okay? So there are four types of what are called context clues and then there's the study of word parts. 
that's going to come next. So if you look at your textbook, chapter, if, if you had done the reading that you were assigned to do, and here's the thing about homework. Um, if you didn't do this homework, I won't at this point accept it if you don't turn it in today, but I do want you to go back and read, catch up with the reading, okay? If you really you need to know this stuff. So here's what it is. Um, again, don't skip anything. Our tendency is to skip introductions and that kind of stuff. But this is important. It's going to tell you what you're going to learn in this chapter. So it gives you a really good introduction. In this chapter, you will learn. Yeah, don't skip over that. Read it. I'm looking for a highlighter. Read it and ask yourself, you know, make some notes on it. Do, you know, do the same kind of thing. If you can't write in your book, put a little post-it note by it and write on that. Okay? So, this is what I've been saying. The reason I don't let you use the dictionary. Too many interruptions to check the dictionary can interrupt your concentration. You can't just under ignore unfamiliar words. You have to know what they mean. So, here are some strategies. Using context clues. There are four strategies that we're going to talk about. These statements are up here. Contrast, example, and Okay. What is a restatement clue? What do you, can you guess that means? Just from that word restatement. It restates the meaning of the word. Yeah, it saying. states the meaning of the word. Uh, yeah, re again, re yeah, restates. So this moves into word parts, but if we know that, we know what the word statement means, right? It says something. What What about when we put the word R-E on the front of a word? What does that mean? Yeah, again, it goes back, it doesn't repeat, okay? Yeah, it says it again. That's what it, that's what it means. A restatement which says the word again. So here's the example they give. During World War II, the British repeatedly tried to decipher the Germans' code. However, they couldn't figure it out until mathematician Alan Turing broke the code. Now this sentence actually has two restatement clues in it. What are they? What are the two places that the meaning of decipher is stated again? Okay. They could with what? They so you're reading the same thing three times. Try to decipher the code. Figure out what's it here. What does it refer to? The code. The code. Broke the code. It's restated twice. So what does decipher mean? Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of difference um, between these exercises, it, it, between some of these exercises and what I want you to do, but we'll talk about that. I want to see that you understand that there's a restatement. So what I would like you to write down here is figure it out or broke. Broke the code. Okay, either one of those would work for me. Um, in the section where Lorraine Fleming has you circling things, she gives you some other meanings, but they're pretty, they're close enough. I would also accept the flat out Okay. You could also approach this by word parts. If re means, re actually means back or again. Okay. What does this introduction to a word mean. What happens when you put D-E on the front of a word? 
What if you de defuse a bomb? What are you doing when you defuse a bomb? Undo. Undo. Yeah. This is a negative. It's an opposite. Okay. So this is no or not. What is this word? C i p h e r. Has anyone ever heard that? Cipher. cipher? No. What's cipher? a cipher? To put together. It's to put together? Actually, it's the, it's the opposite. A cipher is something that you need to put together. A cipher is like a puzzle that isn't together. So you're close. You're on the right track. Yeah, a cipher is a riddle or a puzzle. You said, this is a real cipher. Okay. So you're unpuzzling. You're, you're figuring, again, same thing here, just figuring it out. Okay. So several ways to approach this. Now, one other thing. What's this little thing? What do you do when you see something like that in your reading? What does that you want you to do? Where? Look it up where? Of course. This is this probably gets yes, Sandra. It says, look at the little old notes on the bottom of the page. Exactly. Yes, look at the little notes on the bottom of the page. A more familiar, this is actually literally called a dagger. It's a little dagger. The more familiar one is, is called an asterisk, a little star. You've probably seen a little star. Okay. It means look down here. Alan Turing is widely considered to be the father of computer science. Okay. You will probably run into him if you take computer science classes, if you take math classes, you know, if you take history classes, you will run into Alan Turing. Okay, so it's just a, this just gives you a little more information. The writer of this textbook tends to use these for this kind of thing, and then she uses the actual little star for vocabulary, if it is a vocabulary meaning. So my reason for noting this right now is that this is, if you have one of these little guys here, there's a restatement clue down here, if it's a vocabulary clue. That's another form of restatement clue. Um, she gives you some, in textbooks specifically, textbooks make heavy use of restatement clues. Um, for instance, in this sociology book, this, we had this in the other class, so it's already marked up. Generally, when you see a word in italics or bold, it often means that it's going to be defined. The word is going to be defined right there. So the restatement clue, in almost all societies, there's some social mobility. This is the meaning of social mobility. And yes, if that's what they give you, and that's the restatement clue, I would like you to write that down if it's that specific, okay? They also use dashes for restatement clues. What's vital capacity? The maximum amount of air you can inhale and exhale. That's the definition in this biology textbook of vital capacity. What's globalization in this anthropology textbook? That's it, and that's what I want you to write down. If you are given a flat out statement like this, these are more obvious than this kind. There are several different types. This, this is not quite so obvious. But these are flat out obvious. And very often, these are the things you're having to learn. Vital capacity, globalization, social mobility. In those classes, you're going to need to know what those are. OK, contrast clues. So restatement clues basically deal with Synonyms. What are synonyms? Remember 
remember that from fourth grade or eighth grade? Words that are the same? Yeah, the words, and this is always tricky. Synonyms are words that mean the same. Yeah, that's what always confused me about. I was always so confused. Um, what you there also are. What are these? So synonyms. Th this is words like cipher, puzzle, riddle. Those are, those are synonyms. They have basically the same meanings. Homonyms are these. Does that make sense? Synonyms mean the same. So homonyms, what do they do? Do these all mean the same thing? They sound the same. Okay, so what we're looking for with restatement clues are synonyms. What we're looking for with contrast clues, anyone know the third word? Now, when I was in school, for some reason, I remember having those all three of these words in a lesson together, even though two of them are connected and one of them isn't. Synonyms, homonyms, and what's the third one? Yeah. So contrast clues are antonyms, which mean what? Opposite. The words that mean the opposite. Okay. So when you have a contrast clue in a sentence, you don't have the definition, you have the opposite meaning. So, as a young man, he had lacked confidence and became tongue-tied when he had to talk in the group. What does this mean? What is the word tongue-tied? Have you heard that word? That it's, that's kind of old-fashioned, but what, what happens when you get tongue-tied? Go out on a first date or something, and you get embarrassed and you get tongue tied. What 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 can't you do? Speak. Speak. Yeah, you just kind of there. You can't say anything. Okay. So tongue tied means you're quiet. You're silent because you can't. You're so embarrassed or whatever. You can't speak. So as a young man, he had lacked confidence and became tongue tied when he had to talk in a group. But as he grew older and more, more confident, he was relaxed and articulate. Okay, this word is a key. That is one of the words that indicates there's going to be a contrast. So if lacking confidence, okay, now he's more confident. What do you think tongue-tied means? I mean, what do you think articulate means? in that sentence. So if he couldn't talk when he was tongue-tied, now what does he do? More verbal. Good. He's more verbal. Exactly. He's talkative. He talks more. Okay, that's the kind of thing I want you to write down. Does that make sense to people as far as what a contrast Wait, you mark up the book? What? Can we mark up the book? Um, can you mark in your book? Yes. Not if you want to sell it back. Don't so, want to sell it back. like I said, take a, what what your directions tell you to do. Again, back to the directions for homework <laughs> is. Um, let's see. I think I did this. Do not write in your textbook or tear pages out if you plan to return it. Do homework in blue or black pen. Writing on one side of the sheet only and staple all pages together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so do contrast clues make sense? Con and I, this, this, I'm never going to give you a test that says define what a contrast clue is, but I am going to, when you turn in work, 
reading word, and you have a vocabulary word wrong, I am going to write on there, use the contrast clue in the sentence, or use the restatement clue in the sentence. And I expect you to know what I'm referring to. Right? So this is language we're going to use throughout the, the, the semester. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to ask her that you want a couple of minutes. She doesn't need to download at you. She, she needs you, she, you need to be down there at two. And if you're a couple of minutes late, that's not going to be too much. Okay, so let's just look before the, the reading center people leave. I mean, that's the other thing. RC stands for two things reading cafe and reading center. So I get confused. So before the reading cafe people leave, let's just look at a couple of these. Um, contrast. One other word I wanted to mention, and uh, these words, synonym, homonym, antonym, and idiom, these words can all go on these things. If you didn't know what those meant before, you can put them on your blue sheet. What's an idiom? Anyone ever heard that word before? This is idiom alert. Okay. Here, here's the idiom they're referring to. The programmer, and this is a contrast clue. This is in the contrast clue section. The programmer thought his new phone application was, how do you pronounce this? Ingenious. Ingenious. But when he played it with his teenage nephews, he realized it was old hat to them. Has anyone ever heard that before? I think that phrase itself is kind of old hat, all right? Um, up here it says it refers to something that was out of date and old fashioned. I think now you guys would say old school, right? You say it was old school, yeah. So this slang, can, it's, it's a slang phrase. It tends to change, okay, over the century. So now you would say old school. So either old school or old hat, here's the definition of an idiom. Could you take that phrase and say, oh, this is really old hat, or this is really old school? What if you tried to translate that phrase straight across into another language? Would that translate exactly to Spanish? That's not, that's not gonna make any sense to somebody in another language. That's the definition of an idiom. Something that, an idiomatic phrase, something that doesn't translate well into another language. It was interesting because last hour, um, I was trying to say that, where did that one go? I tried to say that the word tongue-tied was an idiom. And somebody said, no, in Spanish, it's the same which I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's not technically an idiom, but it seems to me like it should be. Okay, so the, what, the, let's see. Um, so what does old hat mean? Does it mean simple and popular? I mean, sorry, what does ingenious mean? This is confusing when it has an underline and, a, and a, you're looking for the meaning of this. Is it simple and popular? Is that the opposite of no. <laughs> Old-fashioned, silly no. and boring. No. True. No. No. Um. This is the opposite of old-fashioned. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is, reading cafe people are going to go down to the library and take their break on the way if you need to. Okay. Um, bring your stuff with you because last hour the reading cafe people did not come back to the classroom. All right, you'll probably come down there. Um, reading strategies people are going to take a break and come back at two, and we are going to go over some more. As the reading strategies people are going to keep working on this. Okay. If reading cafe people have homework three, you need to turn it in before you. Leave. Okay. And we'll talk about uh, next time, we'll talk about what a missing homework would mean.